In this video, we are going to take a look at rendering a substance material in Blender using cycles. We will export textures from this procedural sand material in Substance Designer and set up the material in Blender. To begin, I want to take a look at the 3D model I am using in the 3D view. This is a plane that I created in Blender and has a dimension of 25 meters by 25 meters. It has also been pre-subdivided to help with tessellation. Using this predetermined size allows me to establish the proper ratio of mesh dimension to height scale for my displacement settings. Essentially, it removes the guesswork when creating my height and allows me to use the same height scale in Substance Designer and Blender. Now, before I get to exporting these outputs, I want to talk about my normal format. So I'm working just in the typical default setup of Substance Designer, which is using DirectX as the normal format. Since I'm going to Blender, I'm going to need to convert my normal to OpenGL format. And in my case, I'm doing that by just using this simple normal invert node. So if I hit my space bar and I do a search here for normal, you can see that we have lots of utilities for working with normal maps. And here I'm just using the normal invert node. Now with this node selected, I can come into here and I can just enable the green channel invert. And what that's going to do is essentially just convert this from DirectX to an OpenGL format, which as I said, is what I need for Blender. Now, if you know that you're always going to be working in OpenGL, you can come over here to the preferences. And if we come over to our projects and then the general category, if I scroll down, you'll see there's an option here to set a default normal format. And you can switch this from DirectX to OpenGL. And that will automatically configure the graph as well as the 3D view to work with OpenGL. In that particular case, I would not need to use this normal invert node. Okay, so the next thing I want to take a look at is the outputs. So I'm going to come over here to, let's just say, my base color output. And I want to bring your attention here to this label field. You'll notice that here I have the value of color. And with this label field, you can set basically any type of name that you want for your texture. And you can access this field when you're exporting your textures. So speaking of export, let's come over to the top of the graph. I'm going to click this button and I'm going to choose Export Outputs. So here you can see that I'm exporting from my graph and I have a destination set. Here I have my format, I'm gonna be using PNG. And then here I have my pattern. This allows me to configure the naming convention for my texture export. So here you can see that I'm using this tag for label. If I click this drop down, I have access to several of these patterns. And like I said, I'm gonna use label. Now I'm using label here because I'm specifically going to be referencing this name in Blender using the Node Wrangler add-on. So that's why you'll notice that for my base color, I have it just simply set to color for the label field. All right, so now that all that's set up, I can go ahead and set my resolution. You'll notice here that my parent size, if we check, I'm just going to export this out at 4K. And once again, I'm gonna to go to my export outputs and I'm going to do my export. Now, one last thing I wanna bring your attention to is this option here for automatic export when outputs change. This is a really powerful feature to enable because what it means is that, let's say I go back in Designer and I start working and making changes in my graph. Well, after I've done this initial export, with this option enabled, Substance Designer will just re-export the textures out in the background. And this lets me work pretty seamlessly within Designer while the exports are being done, like I said, in the background. Now, when I jump over to my 3D application, such as Blender, I can just auto reload the textures and I'm ready to go with my changes. So for now, I'm going to hit my export outputs button. I'm gonna export my outputs and then we're gonna jump over to Blender and we're gonna hook up the textures to our material. So now we're gonna set up our scene. Here I'm in the shading tab and I've already imported my plane. Now I want to light my scene with image-based lighting. So I'm gonna come over here to my world data and you can see that I have my background node and I need to import an HDR image. So I'm gonna use Node Wrangler to help me work with my nodes and importing in my textures. So if I come up here to edit and we go to preferences, if we look at add-ons, let's just do a search here for node and you can see that I have Node Wrangler enabled. Now I wanna bring your attention here to this tag section. These tags are used for auto texture detection when setting up your material. And if you'll notice, we have our base color and within here we have several tags. Now in the Substance Designer section of the video, I had set the label for my base color output to color, specifically so that I could work with this auto texture setup. 
Now you can also create your own tags as well, but in my case, I just went with the default settings. All right, so I'm gonna close my preferences, and now with the background node selected, I'll hit Control T, and Node Wrangler is going to create for me the environment texture node, as well as a mapping and texture coordinate node. So here I'll click Open, and I'm gonna navigate here to an HDR image that I downloaded from hdrihaven.com. So here I'll click Open, and now I'm gonna switch my viewport here to my rendered shading view. And now we can see that environment, which I'm going to be using to light my scene, is now here mapped in the background. So with my plane selected, I'm now gonna jump over here to my material properties, and I'm going to create a new material. So I'll click the new button, and while I'm here, let me just call this sand. So now I can jump over here to my object data, and you can see that we have this principled material. Now before I start adding my textures, let me jump in and create a camera. So I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm gonna choose camera. Now the camera is selected, so I'm gonna hit the zero key on my numpad to look through the camera. Then I'll hit the N key to open up my numeric properties, and then I'm gonna lock my camera to view. This lets me frame up my shot from my camera perspective. So now I'll hit Shift C just to zoom out on my view, and now we can see our plane. So once again with the plane selected, we have our material. So now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Shift Control T, which is gonna take me to this principled texture setup. This again is part of Node Wrangler. So now I'm just going to navigate to where I have the textures. Here I'm going to select color, height, normal, and roughness. And with all these maps selected, I can simply hit this principled texture setup button and you can see that Node Wrangler has now created the node network for me with the click of a single button. Also, you'll notice that my color space is set up correctly as well. So for my base color, the color space is set to sRGB. For my data maps like roughness, normal, and displacement, you can see that the color space is set to non-color. So now I'm gonna come over here to my render properties and I'm going to switch my render engine to cycles and I wanna make sure that my feature set is set to experimental. By using experimental, I'm going to get access to this adaptive mode on my subdivision surface modifier. And speaking of, let's just come over here to our modifier properties and let's just add the subdivision surface modifier to my plane. Here you can see that adaptive mode and I'm going to just go ahead and enable that. Now, we still don't see any displacement in the render view. So to fix that, we'll come over to our material properties and I'll scroll down here towards the bottom where we have settings and keep going and you'll see that we have displacement. It's set to bump only by default. So I'm gonna set this to displacement and bump. Now, when I do that, we'll start to see our displacement here in my 3D view as we render this with cycles. Now I can see that my displacement is quite intense. So if we jump back over to my material network, here we have this displacement node and I can see that the scale is set to a value of one. Now, if you recall back in Substance Designer for the shader, I had the scale set to 0.5. So let's just use that same value here, 0.5 and we'll hit enter. Now you can see that our render view is now matching what we were getting in the Substance Designer 3D view in terms of our displacement. I can also jump back over here to my world data, and if we take a look at my mapping node, I can adjust the rotation on the z-axis. So if we do this, this is essentially gonna let me just change my lighting direction. So here I'm just gonna quickly kind of frame up a shot to have the lighting come more from this direction. Now one thing else I wanna do is I wanna jump over here again to my object data because I wanna take a look at my material, and I think here on my mapping node, I'd like to set up some tiling. So if I come over to my scale, I could set a value here for the X and Y. So for example, let's come in here and let's type in four and then we'll do the same value four. So we'll do a four by four tile on the X and Y here for the mapping node. So we are tiling our texture, but you'll notice that the displacement scale is quite intense now. So we're not getting the result that we want. Now in Substance Designer, since we're working with a global tiling on the shader, when you set that value, we are automatically adjusting the height scale. And we can set up an automatic system like that here in Blender as well. So first thing I'd like to do is probably go ahead and link this X and Y value together. So let's start here with the X. I'm just going to move my mouse over, right click, and I'm going to choose to copy as a new driver. Then I'm gonna come over to my Y axis or my Y scale and just right click and I'm going to just paste the driver. So now I've linked these two guys together. So if I come over and I type in a one, you can see that the Y value comes along for the ride as well. 
So let's jump this back to a value of four. So now we have that set up. What we need to do is set up a relation between mapping scale to our actual displacement scale. And we can do that with just some very simple math. So what I'm gonna do is hit Shift A, and I'm going to come over to Converter, and I'm gonna create a math node, and we'll place that here. Now, for the operation, let's set this to divide. Now I have my two values, and lucky me, the first value is set to 0 0.5, which just happens to be the height scale I wanna work with. So I'm gonna leave this value at 0 0.5, and for the second value, I'm just going to right click, and then I'm going to just paste my driver. So now I have this relationship where I'm going to divide my height scale by my tiling scale. So I can take this value and just place this here into the scale of my displacement node, as you see here. So now you'll notice that I've basically set up a relationship between my mapping scale to my displacement scale. So we'll come back, we can kind of frame this up. Let's say that uh, if we wanted to, we could jump back over to our mapping scale. And once again, I can change one value now, the X. And now you can see that my displacement scale is now matching my mapping scale. So in this case, let's just go ahead and set this back to four. This is what I want to work with. And now I can come in and just simply frame up a shot. So now I've set up my material and let's say that I want to go back into Substance Designer and make a change to my graph. So here I am back in Substance Designer and I've created a parameter for show wood debris. So I'm just simply going to enable this and you can see that it's going to add uh, this wood debris here. And what I'm doing in my actual graph, you'll notice that I have uh, a few of these simple wood shapes that I'm then feeding into a shape splatter node so that I can essentially scatter this wood debris across my material. Now, because I had automatic export when output change enabled, I know that designer has already kicked these textures out for me. So I can simply jump back over to Blender and just reload my maps. So here I am in Blender. I'm gonna hit the N key to open up my properties and I'm gonna come over to Node Wrangler. You can see there's an option with Node Wrangler to reload images, and it's mapped to this shortcut, Alt-R. In my case, I'm just going to click the button. So now I can see that my textures have been reloaded. Now, one thing I've noticed is I need to toggle my viewport shading mode. So I'll simply just jump over here to one mode and then back here to my rendered shading view. And now we can see that all of the maps and everything has been updated. However, I can see that my displacement quality is, is not too great here. And I can see the wood debris, but it's, it's kind of hard to really make out a lot of these fine details. So what I'm going to do is just jump over here to my render properties. And there is a section here for subdivision. So if I take a look at these parameters, you can see that there is a dicing rate for my render, which is set to one pixel. And then there's a dicing rate for my preview, which is set to eight. So if I want to get a real idea of what my render is going to look like, I can just simply set my preview here to a value of 1. And now you'll notice this is going to update the mesh. And now we can really see a lot of this fine detail that I'm getting here in my displacement. And we can really start to see this wood debris. So in this video, we did a walkthrough of how to set up a material from exported maps from Substance Designer. We used No Wrangler to help us set up our material. And we lit our scene with some image-based lighting. We also are using cycles for our render engine with the feature set set to experimental so that we could work with this adaptive mode for our subdivision. Lastly, to get the full quality here in our render preview, we set our dicing rate for preview to one pixel. Now in the next video, we're gonna take a look at how we can further augment this material setup by adding some ambient occlusion as well as a little bit of subsurface.